But the thing that I want to tell you tonight is um, the devil hates when people become born again. And he will war against an individual to steal the seed of salvation, to, to prevent them from ever becoming born again, to prevent them from ever seeing the light of heaven. And what the enemy will do is he will, he will war and attack people from ever coming to meetings, to crusades, to gospel events, to um, you know, ever, ever seeing uh, the truth of salvation. He'll war against that person. He hates it. One way I know that he hates it is there have been many times where I'm leading someone through a prayer to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, and they immediately begin to manifest a demon. Because the demon in them doesn't like surrendering their life to Jesus Christ. So anyway, if the enemy happens to fail in that assignment, and let's say someone becomes born again, his next mode of operation will then be to get that individual who is now saved to spin their wheels their entire life with dead religion. He will then shift his assignment. He'll say, rats, they're saved. They're born again. He said... He, he will then try to either make them backslide or make them waste all their life with just Dale, dead, Dale, <laughs> dead stale religion <laughs> with Dale. <laughs> Maybe, is there a Dale in here? <laughs> God touched Dale. Um, <laughs> he, will, he will try to uh, prevent the person from ever walking in true uh, transformation in sanctification, and a life that's filled with the Holy Spirit. If possible, the enemy will do his best to get someone to just basically sit on the sidelines in the church, and play church, and never reach the full potential of their calling. And in the meantime, he will distract even well-meaning Christians and sincere Christians with the rudimentary and elementary principles of the gospel. This might challenge some of you. The enemy has tactics in the way that he works is he will get people to spend most of their life squabbling and debating over doctrines of atonement, issues of salvation, once saved, always saved. All of the intricacies, and look, I'm a student of the word, we got to study those things. We have to look at it. But some people spend their whole life in the Christian faith and they never settle the issue of salvation. And they go to church and they, they, they spend all their years in church and at the end of the day they never even really believe that they're saved. They, they struggle still with wondering if they're going to make it to heaven because their mindset is law-based and they think they got to be good enough to earn salvation. So they spend their whole life just worrying about whether or not they're saved. And because of that big distraction, they never become someone that God could even use. They, 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 they never actually get filled with the Holy Spirit. And they never reach a point of confidence in God where they start laying their hands on the sick to see them recover. And they start moving as an ambassador of the kingdom. All because the devil... Wasted all of their years with just playing Christianity. Man, one of the saddest things that I've witnessed before many times is when someone who is in the world and radical for the devil becomes born again and then becomes immediately domesticated by religion. They were radical for the devil. But then as soon as he became born again, they felt like they had to put on a suit and tie and play church. They then shift their language from street language to King James English. And they live under the law of do's and don'ts, keeping the Ten Commandments, showing up and tithing, serving in the church, praise God. They were radical for Satan, but they're boring in the kingdom. They're nothing in the kingdom. 
They're going to heaven one day and praise God. But the real assignment, the real purpose of why you're here is not to get to heaven. The purpose was that heaven could get in you. And better yet, the real purpose is not that heaven could get in you, but that heaven could get in you so that it could come out of you. Because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of coming out of you. Hallelujah. This life isn't for you. It is for freedom. You've been set free. In other words, your freedom isn't just for you. Your freedom is to impart into other people. You're called to be a freedom fighter in the world. A change agent everywhere that you go. Every place you step foot should be a place that should come under that ministry of reconciliation, that ministry of change. Oh, but the devil loves to make us go around the mountain. He wants us to spend all of our life just chasing, chasing him in circles, shadow boxing him even though he's defeated. Listen to this. I didn't make this up, but it's a cute preacherism. The devil has been disarmed. He's been defeated. He's a snake that has a, a tongue that whispers lies. See, the Bible actually doesn't call Satan a roaring lion. It says that he prowls around like a roaring lion. In other words, he masquerades and pretends to be something that he'll never be. But his his Mechanism is lies in the way he operates is through the whispering of condemnation. And if the devil can succeed in getting you so bogged down by condemnation and dead religion and just works, works, works. If he can bog you down by those things and he knows that you'll never access the glory of God. And I'm going to liberate you here for a second. You do not need to wait until you're perfect to go into the presence of God. Because it's in the presence of God that you're perfected. It's in the presence of God that you're transformed. The devil wants to make you feel like you have to be qualified. But Jesus Christ qualified you. Jesus Christ invited you into his sonship. So you are hidden inside of him. And, and you can access that place where he is. You are seated with him in heavenly places. But the devil will beat you down with condemnation and make it to where you don't even want to pray. You can't fathom the idea of prayer because you're so beaten down by the sins and the mistakes and you think that God is mad at you that you can't show up in prayer. How many of you guys have been in times where you show up in prayer and every time you go to pray, it's always repentance? That should not be the bulk of your Christian walk. The bulk of your Christian walk should be celebration, thanksgiving, rejoicing, praise. Because he set you free, and He's changed you. If you sin, you have an advocate. You can go to Him and say, Lord, I, I missed it, but I come into the light. I come to the throne of grace where there's a mercy seat, where the blood of Jesus has been shed once and for all, not being shed again. Not, he's not getting up on the cross and dying again for you, my friend. He's finished His work, and He's done it. Absolutely finished for your behalf so now there's a throne of grace that you can boldly approach and come into and you can boldly drink and you can you can enjoy God without feeling bad about it because he has done a mighty work he is he is he has liberated you oh somebody's going to get it tonight but God wants you to live in the fullness Say fullness. fullness. Put your hand on your belly and say fullness. fullness. Say, Lord, I want the fullness. fullness. Fill me tonight. I want to overflow. I want to bubble up. I want the new wine. I want the living water. I want joy unspeakable, full of glory. Lord, the devil's a liar. He's not going to pin me down with condemnation. I rebuke the spirit of shame. I rebuke the spirit of self-hatred. I rebuke the spirit of heaviness. 
and I receive a garment of praise. I receive an infilling tonight. I receive new joy. I receive fresh oil. Woo, in Jesus' name. Come on. So now that we're on the same page, God wants you to live in the fullness of the Spirit. 